with Indy Realty. Welcome back to the show. Um, we've never really, I, I don't think we've actually said this out loud yet, but when we are um, preparing these shows, we like to start out with a real estate piece and then follow up with someone from the community, nonprofit, someone who's contributing to quality of life in Tucson. So today we have Ramon uh, Ganders, who's here with the Southern Arizona Construction Career Days, and um, they're getting ready to have their big annual event. And so we've invited him to come and kind of get us caught up on that. Thank you. It's good yeah. to see you guys. <laughs> hey, it's good we to love see you having you here. This is a nice <laughs> break in the but middle of here my... Here I am. <laughs> nice, nice break for my middle of the day. Yeah. That's our plan, Ramon. I, I need it. <laughs> yeah. I need it. Well, I happened to see on Facebook that you mm. made a post um, saying that you were just um, invited to join JTED on their foundation board. And so congratulations. Yeah, I'm su thank you. I'm super excited about uh, joining their board. They're, they're changing uh, their board, and so they're looking for more private sector folk. Um, and, of course, construction is one of many things that they do. So I'm yeah. glad to represent the industry to, uh, to share my knowledge. Well, and is that a connection that you made through your involvement with the Southern Arizona Construction Career Days? Yeah, absolutely. Since 2014, um, I've been working with JTED very closely with, with our event, with Career Days, and then some of the things that they have going on. And so uh, it, was, it was a perfect marriage, really, and then working with some of the staff there for all these years. And so it was brought to my attention. They were looking for some folks and asked me to participate. And um, it, it did, you know, it took me a second to absolutely say yes <laughs> because I love that kind of stuff. So yes, like, uh, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take much. I think that they made an excellent choice, Agreed. and, and the, they're lucky to have you. So Thank congratulations. You. Thanks. You have an update for us on. Oh, oh, first man. of all, tell yep. our listeners kind of what you're doing with the Southern Arizona Construction Career Days. So the Southern Arizona Construction Career Days was uh, f uh, formed in 2014 um, under a different association, which was of uh, heavy civil contractors. But reaching out to uh, the other construction industry-related um, associations and, and private sector, mm -hmm. we created this, this association, which is um, founded to increase career awareness to at the time high school students hmm. we shifted mm -hmm. and i say at the time because only a couple of years ago we went to eighth graders um, but the whole the whole premise is the career awareness but not just through paperwork or let's show up to a company's office it is about um, hands-on experience physically for the students to participate so that could include uh, actually getting on a paving machine or a backhoe um, or working with Tucson Water and some of their pipes mm -hmm. or Southwest Gas and Tucson Electric Power and, and hammers and nails and actually doing things on site. And so we treat it just like a regular construction site. The kids get hard hats and all this, all this fun stuff. But the premise is really about that career awareness through hands-on experience. I think that's awesome because I don't know mm. about my other co-hosts here how mm. you guys feel, but I think there are a lot of things that you would just think, especially as a middle schooler or high schooler, I could never do that. And they probably can. They just didn't know what that meant, what that job title means. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you from, from my experience working with the students for all these years that it's about... <coughs> Uh, inspiring the kids to believe that they can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes. a lot of folks, like you just said, don't realize, the students don't realize they can. They're just afraid to do it. So if you give them an opportunity to chase it, mm -hmm. they may want to, to may want to see it. That's why the hands-on experience is really the, the, the clutch because right. then they can really get um, uh, involved in it. And then, of course, they, they get to talk with the um, career professionals right. and then the teachers get to talk with the professionals. And it's a great networking tool as well amongst um, all of us. So it's it's a really a win-win situation for uh, the entire community. The thing I love about it is that it's a career. You don't sit there and say, well, we're just trying to get you out here for a day. No, this can be a career. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't, don't understand that construction is a career. There's a, there's a lot of good people out there making great livings with their family, taking care of great families with construction. I just want to hear you tell let these people know that that's it's nothing wrong with that to be a career in construction. Yeah, it's obviously the biggest hurdle we have, right? The the premise of construction's bad work. Well, yeah, let's be honest, construction can may not be the prettiest of work, 
but it is a hardworking career, and for that, people get awarded for that. Whether <laughs> through like that. whether through you know good company benefits and good pay, right, and or the ability to start your own company for that matter. So I think it's a it's definitely something we we struggle with getting moms and dads to realize that. Mm-hmm. But once you do and you start sharing. Uh, you know what where you can start and where you can finish and how you get through there and how many years I talked to a teacher earlier this week and she was asking about her son um, who wanted to get into um, operating equipment and you know 18 yeah. out of out of high school or 17 out of high school I said it's not good you're not gonna be able to do that right away it's mm-hmm. gonna take a couple of years before you get there but it certainly beats the four years of maybe going to college getting debt and right. then having to pay that back now they can you know get right into the to the workforce so uh, absolutely very rewarding job. Yeah, I think that debt is a huge piece, especially for students that aren't 100% sure of the career path that they want to go on. And so maybe they're two or three years in wondering, what was I What was I thinking? I know my first um, trade school, actually, I went to, I realized after going there for a year that I did not want to sit at a computer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I learned. Right. And so I think it's great. Um, what you're doing and the exposure it gives, but also the hands-on experience. Yeah, we, we, that's, uh, it keeps growing and growing, and so we're really happy to, to do it. And I, <clears throat> Ramon, I want people to realize that you're not deterring people from college. You're just saying, that, you know what, some people just made them want to go and do this for a couple of years and then decide, you know what, I want to go to college now. But guess what? Now you have two years of job experience under your belt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I went to college, okay, so... Um, Bear down, right? So, okay. um, mm-hmm. you know, so absolutely, we're not we're not deterring them. And in fact, there are some jobs and careers that uh, students will have to seek a higher education. Yes, um, but a lot of the things that we do here at the event um, does not, and that's that's okay too. And so, uh, there's definitely a good blend between the two of them. Uh, and for students to see, yeah, maybe I do want to get a higher education, mm-hmm. or maybe I just need the trade um, and get some skill for a couple years through. You know, either JTEDS or uh, Pima Community College or wherever um, there are programs. They just need to see you guys, I think. They just need to see the faces of the people who are doing the work. That's what they don't see and that you guys are successful. Yeah, we absolutely are trying to uh, make it a point that the uh, students, educators can work with the professionals and, and get a, a real hands-on job site experience uh, to, to visually see those things. Yeah, we're here with uh, Ramon Genders, who is the founder of the Southern Arizona Construction Career Day. Uh, we'll be back a little bit more with them. Uh, while I have you, if you are looking to buy or sell your home or have any questions concerning real estate, we would love to help. Please call Sandra at 520-850-1725 or Raymond at 520-904-7711. You are listening to the I Am Real Estate Show on The Voice, KBOI, 1030 AM Radio. We are back on the air. We're here with Ramon Gandars with um, Southern Arizona Construction Career Days. So mm. tell us a little bit about the the event this year. What day is it? So this year's events are going to be November uh, 2nd and 3rd, uh, hosting it at the uh, Kino Sports Complex, not at the ball, uh, in the ballpark. It's uh, north of the um, ballpark on uh uh, there was a paved lot and some sand over there, so we're going to utilize their beautiful lot over there. We're super excited. Uh, so November 2nd and 3rd is our days. And how many students do you have registered right now? Actually, as of today, I believe I just hit 2,000. Wow. Um, and and 2,000 is actually lower than where we were in, I know, in 2019. <laughs> i got to be honest. <laughs> the ch- and the challenge has been um, COVID still, mm-hmm. but bus drivers. Mm. Mm. And so that has been a really big deterrent uh, to this year's event. But we're we're still, you know, whether it was two thousand, four thousand, or one thousand, we still mm. go one hundred percent with all our <laughs> uh, with all our uh, volunteers and all our sponsorship. Nothing changes. Yeah, and I don't want to put us, put us in a time machine to last segment, but something that really kind of just I mean, all all last segment, I didn't have a smart out comic to make because I was just in such awe to what you've put together just because there's just such a big need in our society. I think we've we've met and spoke about this and training people in these different different things because we have such a big labor sh- shortage across the board. And you mentioned how this isn't an ex- exclusion to college. This is in in conjunction, you know, particularly if that's your pathway. And 
I not only do I agree with that, the news kind of recently, the Gospel Rescue Mission, along with Pima Community College, have created a training program for the homeless population that are going through um, their shelter, you know, along with the Pima Community College and funded by um, Bert Lopez. So, you know, this is, it's definitely, I love what you're doing because it's, you know, it's putting another tool in their toolbox rather than saying, Hey, this is the only tool. Just like a lot of people think that you know, college is the only only way. But there's a, there's a lot of different options and in, in advancing in life. Definitely being a military vet, another option that people have. Yeah, I, I think if if I go back to 2014 and uh, let you know about all the partnerships and the different um, avenues that were for training, uh, it's nothing like it is today. Today mm. is just there's so many groups like you just mentioned as in a great example. Mm. Um, and so that's just great to see that there's more and more of this because I think mm-hmm. people recognize mm-hmm. that there is a need and there is a shortage and there will be a shortage mm-hmm. uh, as we move forward. So um, the need is going to be you know even greater as mm-hmm. we move in the next couple of years. And hopefully as you're reaching out to the younger population and offering those opportunities, they will have something that that I, I believe construction careers are always going to be there. Yes, we're I mean, always going to need it. We're yeah. always, right? And people are like, well, isn't there things going to be autonomous? Well, someone still has to be behind something in order for something to move, right? right. So mm-hmm. whether it's here or, or actually on a piece of equipment, yes, there's always going to be the need for it. Um, so construction, obviously, to your point, it's here to stay. So yeah. we gotta we got to cherish it more and, and uh, bring light to it, to, the, to our younger generation, for sure. And as you had mentioned earlier, it's not just the, you know personal; it's it's professional, and it's mm-hmm. a, it's a, it's our society mm-hmm. at the same time right. building a better community. Yes, sir. We we love that. We love we love what you're doing. Um, one thing I was thinking about is that now that you're starting and you're going through your process of getting this event going. Um, how is you going with volunteers? Are you having you need volunteers? Or? So we always need volunteers. <laughs> so I expect the three See, of you there, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Wait, so we're signed up. I, I'm gonna. I, oh, good, good. So yeah, we have a link. You can go to our website at uh, saccd.org. Um, And you can uh, find the uh, volunteer link there, and then you can see all the different areas and times and Mm. kind of a description of what we need. Um, And then, uh, so yeah, we we, I think I equated about 135 to 140 each day of volunteers. And that's just helping with um, getting the lunches or the hard hats cleaned or whatever. Uh, It's not including, you know, all the booths and vendors. That's a a whole separate volunteer aspect. Mm. Is is there a a minimum age requirement for someone, like if there are um, youth groups or um, younger people that wanted to come and bring their organization to work? Are there jobs for them, or do you really need people that are over, say, the age of 18 or 21? We prefer somebody over the age of 18 or older, but that doesn't mean if you're younger and you're with mom and dad, absolutely, we'd love to have you there. Okay. Mm. We talking about the uh, S A A S A C C D SAD D. That's what I call it now. Okay. And we love the fact that you're doing this, Ramon. And if you don't know who we're talking to, we're talking to Ramon Ganders, who is the founder of the Southern Arizona Construction Career Days. But he also has a full time job um, <laughs> as a yes, I'm the chief information officer with Tucson Asphalt. And he's mm-hmm. also an uh, U of A alumni. Bear down, go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job, and how's the funding going for for you so far? So I think the last time I was here, I think it was somewhere around eighty. I don't remember exactly. We were. And under. I remember, and I was like, we I was under a hundred. Yeah. Uh, today I'm at a hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars raised, uh, and I'm still working on a few sponsors in our community that are still reaching out to us. We're we're nearing our deadline right now, so uh-huh. it's always fun to get the last minute folks mm-hmm. in there. So uh, I'm working on that still, um, and so we're, we're we're. I mean, it's the most money we've raised in all the years we've had this, um, and I think that just goes to show uh, what we've been doing this entire you know, nine years, and uh, I'm really, really thankful to each and every one, like yourselves, that work on our planning committee to help spread the word and, and get the uh, the opportunity in our contractor's hand to participate. You know, I, I ask this selfishly, but something that comes in my, to mind, you know, you do this event annually, and it's just such an amazing event. Has the consideration of doing it more regularly come to mind, and what does that look like? 
if, if you're planning it, I'll let you do it as much <laughs> yeah. as you want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I guess we talked about it yeah. during the break. I was just like, it's, there's a lot that goes into Because we, huh? we literally start planning in January and the mm. event's in November. Yeah. So I think I only get a month off, mm. you know, and the first few months are the easier months. Don't get right. me wrong. But, <laughs> yeah. but I think to, so, so no, we have, it, a lot of it's because of the schedule of, of the students mm-hmm. and, and testing. So the November is kind of a sweet spot to where the mo- more of the school districts are available to participate. So we've looked at moving it in the spring and things like that. It just doesn't mm-hmm. it just doesn't pencil out. However, what we're trying to do now is to plan uh, other type of events um, and maybe not just for the students, maybe it's for the educators, maybe it's mm-hmm. seminars, maybe it's I mean, even doing training for the kids that participate. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of folks that That's what that, I was trying to get yeah, out of you. So a lot of <laughs> a lot of a lot of folks come to me and say how do can I provide them training? Mm-hmm. So you know, our company that we use at Tucson Asphalt for insurance uh, crest insurance they uh offer to to provide um 10 hour training for the students mm-hmm. um and so we're, we're going to try to figure out ways to partner and do other things that um are related to the, the to the construction mm-hmm. um but not specifically to the event yeah awesome yeah you're getting close to the event and so the thing is that <clears throat> it's everything coming together or everything's coming together you get the building setting up are your location locations good is all your processes going through? Nothing that's holding you up? So nothing's holding me up. Actually, this morning we had to submit our traffic control plan because um, obviously we want street signs out on the out on the out on the perimeter of the property, so buses know where to go, the mm-hmm. volunteers know where to go. So we need signs. Uh, it takes permits to do that. Yeah. So we just submitted all our stuff this morning. Uh, so that's that's in the works. I got a meeting tomorrow morning with Pima County on site to go through every area, other little details that we need to figure out um so like restrooms and uh whatever else so there's a there's a litany of things that we have and so um yeah i'm, I'm down to what four weeks before this event occurs and a lot will happen within the next four weeks so uh we're still you know drafting the map uh we have got one well this is the first draft but i think we're, we're already on maybe two or well three or four and, and how, how large is that that work site that you're it's large. I don't know. I don't know the acreage on there, honestly. But I'm looking at this map, and and it's uh, we've already probably went 25 percent more than what we had in the years past. So that's good. There's a lot of property there. So let's just um, you know, sky's the limit. Right. Um, is it too late for schools to participate at this point? No, th- no, they're, it's not too late. Uh, we we'll all take them up to the very last minute, but we prefer to have them registered by the end of the first week of October and that's just for because we have to get shirts and other these food and all these other things to to match up with that so uh, we certainly will take students up to the last minute and you know we, we reach out to not just all the major school districts but also charter schools and even home schools and wow. second chance opportunity schools so we Great. we um, have a lot of uh, we I think by right now we have about fifty four different schools participating wow. uh, that covered the two thousand um, students so um, that just goes to show you you know where we are uh, in terms of the reach in our community. Have you sat down and calculated how many man hours go into? The planning for this. Are one, you trying to make him event. cry? You're trying no, to make the man cry I'm on radio. To show that this I this is, this <laughs> is a big thing. Yeah, yeah I can see it. Yeah, yeah, it starts turning a little I, red. No, I I have not, and you know why? <laughs> I'm scared. <to> be, uh, <laughs> for sure, I'm scared. And if yeah. I tell my group, my planning group, what that would be, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. I'd probably scare them too. So. Yeah, yeah, they can't no, afford you. No, yeah, uh, I get it. Yeah, yeah running so. a nonprofit myself. Yeah, if I were to calculate the amount of hours that I don't pay myself, it's I yeah. I would probably be crying with you. Yeah. We have to hold each other and console each I other. I thank Tucson Asphalt for allowing me the time to yeah. do it too. Yeah, you that's know, awesome. That's the best part of it all is that that uh, you know I've um, had the great support by my own yes. company and they're going to participate too this year for the first time. Oh wow! Um, so that's really cool. So we were planning our own little area and and uh, get some of the guys out in the field to be able to, to participate with and, and interact with the students. That's awesome. We can't say enough how much we appreciate what mm-hmm. you're doing investing in the the young people in Tucson and giving them opportunities that they might not otherwise have. And this is a pretty unique event too. Um, is anyone doing it to the level that you're doing this? So, you know, Phoenix has a similar program, very different model and setup. Um, but yes, for us, we, we feel in Tucson, it's yeah. definitely the only type of event 
mm-hmm. that happens this way. Now, there's some others out there that are have have come on to, on board since, and right. we're really excited and support those too. But uh, definitely, we were the kind of the first. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate that. Thanks. Guys. Um, we want to sp- um, thank our sponsors: Horizon Inspections, Indie Realty, Inspired Life Mortgage, Arizona Sands Club, Rego Pest Prevention, Atomic Nutrition, and Sweet Little Chefs. We hope to uh, have you back next week. And uh, say goodbye, Raymond. Goodbye, Raymond. Goodbye, Raymond.